Metal Slug X. Metal Slug X. Man, this game brings back so many memories. If you are 20 years old or more, you probably have heard about it, or better yet, have played it. Be it on the original hardware or digital re-releases, some people may remember sitting next to their friends, blasting through enemies together, stealing each other's power-ups and just having a good laugh. And so was I. If you have never heard about it before, don't worry, you won't be by the end of this video. Because I, with Stick, will be playing this game from start to finish and then share my thoughts and comment about it. Metal Slug X, the first game I have ever played. I was around 4 years old when my parents first got me the PlayStation 1 and with that, the Metal Slug X. That's when my gaming journey started. With my parents' help, they're setting up the console for me and helped me boot up my first ever video games. Metal Slug is a series of run and gun games where the players run through a stage while shooting at various enemies. You are the regular army elite, sent out to stop the rebel army from taking over the world. You know, the good guy stop bad guy from doing bad things. The actual plot is actually much more complex and I don't want to turn this video into a long video just yet, so I ain't gonna go into it that much here. The series is also features a very detailed pixel sprites and animations, which in my opinion make the series stand out among the rest of run and gun games at the time. The quality of sprites and animation are so good that if you tell me these games were made and published in 2024, I would still believe you. At least, it was till they transformed it into whatever this is. Through your gameplay, you can collect power-ups like new weapons, grenades, or these super vehicles that the game calls slugs. Now, Metal Slug X Super Vehicle 001 is Actually, a modified version of Metal Slug 2, Super, Super Vehicle. Vehicle. You see, back in those days, before they invented a live service gaming for developers to update their games, introducing new contents or fixing bugs and glitches, that was the live service original intention by the way. They had to release a new, modified version of the same game to address those issues. So, Metal Slug X is almost identical to Metal Slug 2 in many ways, with some tweaks here and there, like this boss here now appears on a different stage, the sky is now dark, some new weapons and enemies. Actually, the main reason they made Metal Slug X is to fix the constant slowdown that the Metal Slug 2 had. Doesn't seem to be the case for the Steam version though, cause the slowdown are everywhere in this version. For this video, I will be playing the Steam version of Metal Slug X since it's the most accessible version for me. And let me tell you, I'm not very happy with the menu and UI of the Steam version at all, because the version I played when I was a kid was the PlayStation 1 version, and it has this very sick intro and a very iconic character selection screen. By the way, do you want to see the Steam version ones? What? Now we are dropped straight into the first mission. We'll now be blessed by this awesome soundtrack. Take a good listen to this. Man, I still remember this track to this very day. Especially the guitar part. I mean, it just... Mm. Oh, I also turned on the auto fire for this playthrough. I will need this one later. After we drop in, the action starts right away. No messing around. These are the rebel infantry. 
I usually call them grunts. They are the common enemies throughout the game and armed with variety of weapons. Unless they're carrying a shield, every single one of them go down from just one shot from any weapon. So they're pretty easy to take care of. Free diesel, man. Thank the you. game calls them POW and grab ourselves the heavy machine gun. Classic sound effect. The heavy machine gun. A spray and pray brute gun. The game gave us like two of them here, so don't even worry about running out of ammo. This bomb dropping helicopter here is the Ashubu. The Rebel Army Attack Helicopter Not that challenging on its own since the bombs can be very easily avoided It won't show up much throughout the game either It appears like twice if I remember that right Oh and another new enemy is over here The Serubia A heavy tank that shoots bowling balls Usually it would keep us occupied trying to dodge the balls so the enemy could kill us Keep running and gunning your way through and BOOM Enemy chaser. One of the new weapons at in the Metal Slug X. This gun fires homing missiles which tracks down enemies at random. Oh, there's this one secret that I always remember. Metal Slug X is filled with secrets like these. You shoot at random spots and could default up. Keep moving a little bit and fire our first slug. The SV Camel. Basically a camel strapped with walking guns, though despite it being a vehicle, this camel offers no protection to you at all, so you would still die if you are hit, but that's alright though, because after defeating these Arabian soldier, we'll get a new slug right here. The SV-001 Metal Slug is the title of the game. It's a tank armed with walking guns and a giant cannon. This tank will also provide you with extra hit points, unlike the camel we had earlier, indicated by this bar right here. The bar runs out, the tank explodes, but you can bail from it before that happens. You can also refill the bar by collecting these gas cans. We are stopped by the mass nails. If they come in a row like this, shoot the red one first. If you can destroy the red one, all of them will explode at once. Introducing the first boss, the Iron Nokana Mark II. A giant armored miracle armed with a cannon, missile launcher, and a tank on its back. Also, can we talk about the design of this boss for a second? It looks very similar to the German Puma armored car but with extra spikes on it. And look at that! It even has a flamethrower beneath it. Disclaimer, the real German World War II Puma doesn't have the flamethrower underneath its belly. Which we can then destroy and BAM! We are now safe from the boss main cannon. But the missiles can still get ya. And the Iron Nokana Mark II is destroyed. And because we didn't die once during that mission, all the POW we rescue will give us extra points and the mission complete. At the start of mission 2, we are introduced to another new weapon, the laser gun. It fires a laser across an entire screen which can pierce through all light enemies. But there's no light enemies in this mission whatsoever. Unless you count these bugs and bats, but that's pretty much it. Most enemies here are mummies, and they are heavy enemies, so the laser can go through them. It is a bit less effective in a slope terrain like this. Thankfully, we'll get our hands on a weapon specifically designed to be used on slopes. The Iron Laser, one of the weapons added in the Metal Slug X. It fires these rockets on wheels which will zoom along the surface and explode on impact. Very useful on slope like this. When I was a kid, I used to call this gun the speed puppy gun for some reason. Maybe because the projectile looked somewhat like puppies and they made such a weird noise when firing. If you're fast enough, we can snatch this flame shot behind this mummy generator right here. The flame shot is my favorite weapon in the entire series. The metal slug flame shot is exactly as the name suggests. It shoots a puff of flames which can go through multiple enemies, hit them multiple times, give them burning death animation, and it's awesome. But the only downside is that it has a very short range and isn't so great when you're firing it downward. If you happen to be attacked by the mummy poison, you'll be transformed into the mummy yourself. And in the mummy form, it's 
so slow. Everything is so slow. Your jump is delayed. You take ages to throw grenades, and your control are very stiff. So being mummy sucks. Collect this potion right here and become a human again. Why being a mummy if you are hit by a poison again? This time you will die. Also, why you are being a mummy if you try to throw grenades? Sometimes your character will just toss away your own head, which I find pretty funny. Pretty cool details. Grab the fire bomb. It's basically a Molotov cocktail in other video games. And then, behold, my number one favorite gun. Shotgun. The shotgun. Feast your eyes upon this magnificent enemy beacon of a weapon. It fires this giant sprite of damage, flashes the screen, and deletes any poor souls that happen to be on the receiving end of the barrel. Just take a good listen to its roar. Alright, I didn't get to show this on the previous mission, but if you shoot a backpack of Lil Rumi over here, you can get some extra goodies out of her and then get extra points before you can then approach and rescue her, of course. In which I fail, she ran away first. Oh well. Some new enemies here, these bats carrying a poison jar and these box spitting mummies, they're very annoying. Oh hey, don't forget to shoot this guy over here. He'll give you a gem and then blow himself. Some minor interactions like these can be found throughout the game if you are willing to go look for them. They are usually extra points but it's pretty fun seeking them out. My favorite gotta be this one here where you can actually find a genie in a lamp. Well, that's my first death. Sorry to disappoint you but I still cannot one quarter any of the Metal Slug games. My focus on this video is to talk about the game and not making a deadless run. But I will try my best not to die as much. No promise though. Just the last push through these mummy dogs till we reach the end of this mission. Also here's the new slugs. The SVX-15D. Slug Knight is a mech with twin Vulcan guns. You're starting to see a pattern for all of our slug here, right? And a crouch cannon? What's with the Japanese and their crouch weaponries? You better get a hang of this crouch mech fast because the boss is already here. The Eshi Nero, the master armored gigantic excavator. It's basically a giant excavator robot with a shape resembling a cobra. As much as I love the design of the Eshi Nero, I'm not a big fan of Eshi Nero fights whatsoever. Or any bosses that emerge from beneath because it requires players to do the downward shooting a lot, which is quite a pain for me to do. I gotta jump, press down mid-air, and then fire. Keep doing that over and over again until the boss is dead. Well, good thing we have the slug knight right here. Nope. Oh, the auto fire came back to bite me in the butt, isn't it? In case you don't know, if you press fire and jump at the same time when piloting a slug, you will do the metal slug attack, where you abandon the slug and send it charging into the enemy. Now without the slug noid, back to the downward shooting I go. Fortunately, the game gave us plenty of heavy machine gun ammo, otherwise this could have been a lot more painful. The boss attacks are easy enough to avoid, the lightning ball can be a little bit tricky, the rockets can be shot down, and this giant laser you simply just move to the side and you dodge it. And just like that, we destroy the Eshi Nero. Well, that sucks. See, if you died, you lose all the rescue POW. But hey, that's mission 2 done with, and on to the next one. Mission 3! Oh yeah, it's time for a train mission. But before we go any further... I do this every time. If you're done, then you're just playing it wrong, man. Oh, on this mission, we are getting access to the... The Fat Transformation. It literally power ups all of our equipment like a lot. See, the shotgun is very powerful, right? Now check this out. Don't, don't do it to me! I beg you! No! Ah! 
Even our firebomb turned into this super-sized napalm ball. We are now the ultimate life form. Absolutely nothing can stop us now. I mean, Saitama had to work out to get his unlimited power. How about turning into the ultimate life form fueled by nutrition? You can't defeat me. But he can. Ah, uh, I messed up. I messed up and I didn't take the upper route. If I have taken upper route, I could have avoided this diet pill. Well, back to our molo form, I guess. Grab the rocket launcher. You all know what rocket launcher is, right? If you have played video game like at all, you know what rocket launcher is. It can shoot up to two rockets on the screen at the same time for some reason. Just two rockets. It's just not my favorite weapon, if you couldn't tell. Also, we are getting attacked by these boatmen, and their boats seem to have much better rocket launchers than we do. From how this looks as a kid, I thought these rockets can fly backward, which makes me believe that rockets in IRL can fly like this. I mean, I, I believed that for years, and I blame this game for it. Also, did I mention that these boats can still operate without a freaking pilot? It's just a giant rock, and it happens to be one of the most powerful throwable in the video games. Yeah, the napalm fuel ball of death earlier was very powerful, but I mean look, this rock can one-shot this armored tank. And again, the game just has to take this away from me so soon, when I'm starting to enjoy it. Oh look who's back, the Ashobu. It's red now, which means it's better than the previous one. It kinda is, I mean it dropped like thousand more bombs than the previous one we found in the mission one. Eh, still pretty easy. No, the mission is not over yet. This is just a mini boss. The KC2, a giant veto bomber that does not use bomb at all. I believe the chopper we fought earlier dropped more bombs than this thing could ever have. And instead, the KC-2 attacks us with the twin thrusters and two tanks on its wing. In the Metal Slug 2, the KC-2 is actually a first boss in the first mission instead of the Iron no Kana Mark 2. And the KC-2 in that game sent our soldiers to attack us. Eh, easy enough. And uh, this... It's... Also, my least favorite weapon in the entire series, the drop shot. It shoots these green bouncing balls that explode on contact, which it's not exactly bad. I just really don't like it. And yeah, I know it's perfect for this section here with enemies behind the covers and all that. But I would prefer another weapon than the drop shot any day just because the drop shot is not that satisfying to shoot. I mean, it's just pshoom, pshoom, pshoom. Nah. Alright, fair enough. Maybe the drop shot could have saved me there. Oh, would you look at that? Two new slugs waiting for us there. The SV001 Type R, or I usually call it the orange slug. Unlike the regular one, the Type R moves faster, jumps much higher, and it does not take heavy recoil when hit. Basically, it's a soup up version of the SV001, but since we already used this tank back in the first mission, I'ma go with the slug flyer for the sake of variety. A Vito jet arm with twin Vulcan guns and rockets. The slug flyer is actually one of my favorite slugs in the entire series. It makes me feel like I'm playing a side scroll shooter instead of run and gun game for a bit. It offers something different, even just for a brief moment. Introducing my favorite boss in the entire Metal Slug series, the Dragon Nosuke. I like the fact that instead of installing turrets on this supply train for protection, the rebel army instead doing the big brain move, they built this giant quad leg tank that can move so fast along the rail that the tank can keep up with this train, equipping the tank with gatlings, a flame cannon, and yeah, they don't forget about the crotch cannon, but more like a crotch flamethrower for this one. I mean, hey, this army built a giant snake robot to dig up their ancient runes. The Nosuke can also launch these flaming balls at us, but eh, they're pretty much easy to shoot down. 
I was so close to get that gas can to repair this lock flyer, but uh, whatever. Let's do this the old fashioned way. Ah, oh, goddamn. Hey, at least we got one, right? See? Even Fear was happy about it. Mission complete! Mission 4. We're halfway through the game now, and the game still has some trick left for us. I personally love this set piece here with a bunch of destructible buildings, foods flying everywhere, and there's enough foods here for us to gain the ultimate life form twice. Come to think about it, unlike the first mission, these buildings are not the rebel army's facilities, so... Well, this is war. Consider them... Collateral damage. Except this bus here, it's being used by the rebel, so it's evil. And ah, uh, I really hate this section. There are rockets shooting up from these wheels, so I have to time my jump while avoiding grenades from these guys, they are guys with a shield up there. And I only have the drop shot, the gun that I hate the most. Even at the end, there's still a well here, but instead of rockets, there are soldiers with scuba gears throwing a rocket at me. Now what? I'ma just abuse this post-respawn god mode and brute force my way through them. Grab the almighty rocks once again and the laser gun, then rescue this legendary Ichimonji Hyakutaro. This absolute chat disguised himself as a POW to help us fight against the rebel army. Oh look, the aliens. In that cute little UFO, the game calls them Martians. Still no match for our mighty rocks though. Grab this enhanced heavy machine gun, transform, and get to work. Okay, never mind. Grab the mouse lock, the armor piercer, it basically makes the cannon shoot straight. Oh no. I don't know if it makes the shells even more powerful, but it does feel like it. Here comes one of my favorite bosses. The Big She is a freaking battleship on tracks, armed with a bunch of small cannons and a giant cannon stashed away underneath. After we destroy enough small cannons, it's now a duel between us and that one last giant cannon. Bring it on. Well, that lasts longer than I expected. Oh, in case you're wondering why I kept on jumping off the tank, I was doing this trick that abused the iframe of exiting and entering vehicle, makes it much easier to dodge the boss attack. Nope. Come on! Let me get back into nope. my tank! No! Oh, I beat the boss while outside the tank, so it doesn't cut toward my score. Well, at least I got one POW, I guess. Mission complete! Alright, we are on the mission 5. On the Steam version, the first section is full of slow down. It's so annoying to play and it's such a shame cause this section has a very interesting gimmick. See, when we shoot these cars, they will explode and fly up. They're such a cool thing you see, it's like creating an action scene from a movie. Aside from the spectacle, we can then ride on these exploding cars and then go upward with them. But the slowdown kinda kills the joy here. It's too bad. I mean look, even just one explosion here already slows the game down. I mean come on man. The Girida-O. The Rebels Army main battle tanks. We have seen one of them before, on the back of the Iron Nokana Mark II on the first mission. Unlike the other tank we have seen before which they act like the support for the other enemies. These tanks are designed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with players on their own. 
adapted, barely require any support from other enemies. They can track and shoot where the players are. They are pretty agile and also have a decent HP. Imagine them like the stronger version of these rebuild soldiers we have seen so far, but thank god there's not as many of them. A good thing this section didn't last long. We are at the subway entrance. Deal with some more enemies here and stay away from the entrance. There will be a tank rush into the screen. It used to get me many times before. Finish up the last enemy and for some reason, the game forced us to abandon the tank before we head to the next section. We are in the subways. I still fail to rescue Rumi. Oh, I do love this bit. We know what to do. Shoot the oh. red one. Oh no. Oh, I also turned on the auto fire for this playthrough. I will need this one later. Yeah. It's time to show you what I mean. And there's a pig coming out from the train for some reason. I'm Yo, what the fuck? Ah, here's a bot from the first Metal Slug game. Shoo. Uh, show, but brown is a tank with three turrets and uh, rocket launchers with a hash for a soldier to attack from. Not a big deal. We can just jump. Nope. <coughs> jump over it and avoid the turrets completely. There we go. The design of the tank is pretty cool, though. It reminds me of the German Tiger or maybe the Panther design of the turret. Especially the cannon is more like a tiger, actually. Oh god, it's back again. Well, I have a heavy machine gun this time. Another one? What the? No. I'm back. Screw you. Hello again. No. No! Alright, that should be it. Ooh, super great. Oh, god damn it. No! I won. Get. Knife. Again. Jesus, let's just get out of here. Okay, I have to admit, when I was a kid, this section scared the shit out of me. Playing the Metal Slug games, getting spooked is the last thing I expected. I hate them! I hate these so much. The climb on walls and ceiling, the glow rays, they explode, they're creepies. Yeah, I know they're supposed to be specimen and all that shit, they're just too creepy. Just get them away from me. Oh my god, crotch me, save me! Yeah, come get some, you freaking abominations. The crutch can fire napalms now. Awesome. No, please hang in there, buddy. Shoot some more napalms. Nope. Nope. Let me grab this. Oh god, more of them. Oh god damn it. Damn it, I'm out of the crutch napalm. It's been an honor, buddy. Metal slug attack. Oh nice, the soldier returned. Oh hey, little buddy. We're definitely gonna need your help. Because it's a boss that come from beneath. The horse meat, a submarine with lightning weapons. The slug knight is perfect against it. Spray the Vulcan downward and send out the shell from the crutch cannon. Juke the lightning balls. Hmm, <coughs> I mean, juking the lightning. Bloody hell. Well, thanks for your service, buddy. It didn't last long, but I really appreciate it. God, I hate this boss. Finally, we can get out of here. After a lot of downward shooting later, it's done. We can move on. Mission complete. The final mission. Start off with this section I hate the most again. Remember the rocket whales back in China? It's so much worse here. <laughs> now there are guys throwing rockets and a guy shooting bazooka at me. I can't even nope. loot fast with the iframe this time. Just let me through, please. Ooh, the iron lizard. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You won't get me again. Now into the world's most what the heck rope bridge. I mean, look at it. 
What is going on here? Even when I was a kid, I still thought it was ridiculous. Let alone being an adult now. The bridge is filled with soldiers, rockets, and these soldiers are now throwing these bowling balls. And with this magic bridge here, it's so difficult to dodge them. I know it's the last mission, but god damn, rockets jumping platform and then now this ridiculous bridge? What could possibly come after? Ah, dang it. It's a mini boss. It's the alien O'Neill, the demon sergeant himself, comes to kick our butt while throwing one liners around. Those lines stuck and haunt me in my sleep when I was a kid. He's tough, move around fast, shooting a machine gun, throwing grenades with such an insane accuracy, and don't let him get close to you. The more we injured him, he keeps glowing more and more red, and eventually, he's going down to a killer whale. Oh, well, that's one way to go out, I suppose. Loot his machine gun to get us the heavy machine gun. I wish we would get his machine gun, but that's fine too, I guess. Shoot our way through some more enemies, and we finally to the next section. The end is near. The game is not messing around anymore. Even these common grunts start bombarding us with grenades of alien's accuracy. Oh, also, I don't know if anyone else also did this. When I was a kid, I used to throw grenades to blow up these backgrounds and pause the game just to catch the cinematic scene. It was fine when I was playing solo, but I also did it when my cousin was playing with me. Man, he was so pissed, but it was great. It's pretty fun. I just love appreciate the cinematic scene I somewhat created myself. The Martians return outside their mini UFO this time. They shoot the floating projectiles that we can shoot down or melee to destroy them. They're not such a big threat. Alright, I think you guys are starting to see the pattern here. Fighting through the Martians, sometimes brown Martians, they are the same but shoot more annoying projectiles. Also, what are those Martians doing up there? Till this day, I still have zero clue. Also, I love this thing about the arcade games, especially the run and gun games like these. As long as we don't die, which I'm not doing a great job at, we are rewarded with some sort of momentum. Let me explain. See, there are tons of enemies spreading out over the screen. If we're doing well and grab this heavy machine gun, we can deal with them much easier. Spraying bullets to deal with grunts and stop this Martian projectile, you're gonna have much better time than dying and starting over with a pistol. Heavy machine gun is running out of ammo, right? He has a rocket launcher, an extra nades, and the flame shot. Man, see? This is the momentum I was talking about. When we grab the flame shot, these Martians are coming in as a group like this. Roast them in one shot, time their spawn timing, and then blaze them. See here? I died on purpose to demonstrate the difference between having the flame shot and a pistol. The momentum we had was stopped, and we had to wait until the game gave us another weapon to keep it going. Oh, ho, ho, look, the shotgun. Same with the flame shot, but it's much much more satisfying to shoot. Time they spawn right and BAM! 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 Deal with the rest of the enemy and move to the last section of the game. There he is, General Morden, the leader of the rebel army, getting betrayed by What's the that? Martians? I like that Phil gave absolutely zero shit about what's going on. Yeah, let me pull up my blanket and eat my sandwich while you guys getting shot by these Martians. Bye bye, Morden. Alright, the final boss. The Daimanji. A giant UFO that shoots lightning and energy balls. Can also deploy these small UFO we saw in the mission 4. Shoot them down, and they will drop random items to assist us in the fight. Unfortunately, we don't have mighty rocks to one-shot them, so it's down to the pistol. My god, please stop giving me chickens. I like that in the background you can see the rebel army planes fighting these Martians UFOs. Great, they gave me the laser gun right after the Diamond G was destroyed.
Well, guess I will get to use this laser gun after all. The Ragname, the Martian's mothership, and the real final boss. Coming in with my favorite soundtrack in the entire series. It's time for the final attack. The rebel army is finally here to help us fight. Teaming up with the past enemy against the common threat is my favorite thing in the video games. We set aside our differences even just for a moment because right now, together, we kick these Martians back to Mars. They even bring us the metal slug. Nope. That my dad. All right, let's roll. This boss fight really gave me that anime vibe of the together we can defeat the enemy cliches. But hey, I'm totally on board with that. And just like that, we did it. We did it, boys. The Martians have been defeated. What? Where is clothes? There should have been more shock about their general being in the underwear. Come on! What the heck happened up there in the diamond jeep? Mission complete. Time for the end credit rolls, and we get to witness these cool arts while chilling in the background music. It's one of those games that I would be willing to just sit down and watch the end credit rolls any day. And that's it. That's Metal Slug X, the game that kickstart my journey in gaming, the first game I have ever played. And what a game it was. I would say the game still hold up to this day and it's even more fun with friends. Your friend don't even need to own a copy of the game, you can just simply invite them to the remote play on Steam and just have a blast. I had so much fun playing and talking about this game, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I'm planning on making more videos, so be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out a lot, and have a great day! I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!